Jamming, huh? Yeah. That's right. Nice to see a woman on stage doing comedy. Right, ladies? Yeah. That's right. Because every time a man sees a woman on stage, you're thinking male basher, man hater, lesbian. That's right. You're probably right, because she's kind of cute. That's what I'm saying, ladies. Hey! So I am a parent. I've got two kids at home. Anybody else here are parents thinking about keeping it? Yeah? There you go. And you know, it's funny, there's only one thing I hear in my head all day, only one thing. If you're a parent, you probably hear the same thing too. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Uh, but you didn't have kids. This is a bunch of potheads in this corner. Lord, have SpongeBob SquarePants, the gayest show on television, honest to God. Don't be hissing me in the corner, honey. I got nothing against gay people because somebody has to do my hair. Hey! And if you don't know who SpongeBob is, he's a sponge, he lives in Bikini Bottom, he has a pink lover who's a starfish named Patrick. Oh, it's a romantic comedy, check it out. I saw the movie in Manhattan, and there was this white woman sitting next to me, and she said to me, oh my God, this movie's terrible, it's got homosexual overtones. If you're a parent, you know what I'm thinking. Who gives a crap about the movie? I'm there to take a nap, right parents? And then she says to me, did you hear about Barney? Honey, I had to clutch my pearls. I said, Barney, what happened to Barney? <laughs> Don't let anything happen to Barney because that's the only time of day that I get to smoke a joint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she said, did you know when the lights come on, Barney is black. I said, my, my, my. Isn't that something? Because when the lights come on this theater tonight, guess who else is black? Hey! You guys are so funny. Only black people and security guards get that joke. Anyway, I had two kids within two years. There's a term for that. It's called suicidal. That's right. With the first baby, the doctor said, when the pain gets to be too rough, call us. We'll give you a pain blocker. And I said, too late. You should have given me a pain blocker for the first five years of my marriage. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, I have a Jewish mother-in-law. Okay, maybe the bright lights are blending in with the blonde streaks but I am a black woman with a Jewish mother-in-law, okay? Now, you know the only thing we have in common. We don't want to get our hair wet. Hey. So there was big drama when we got the sonogram results. She was very excited. Okay, so now that we know we're having a little girl, I'd like to know what you plan on naming our little Chachka, okay? Okay, now I realize there's a difference in the background with the African-American colored, whatever you people call yourselves these days. But I don't want a name that's difficult to pronounce like Shaniqua or Shaquandra. I'm thinking of a name that's short but delicious like Hadassah or Goldie. You don't have to be a Jew to know that's a jacked up name to be given to little black kids. <laughs> they gonna be running uptown in Harlem with their cousins Rashid and Rashid. They're gonna be like, yo, Hadassah, yo, Goldie, yo, my homies, what's up? <laughs> Drama. Drama from the moment I met my mother-in-law. My husband decided to introduce me to his mother for Passover, all right? Now, in the car, on the way to Passover, Seder, he leans over and says, look, we're not gonna tell mommy you're black. I'm thinking that's smart, she'll never notice. But she noticed, and that's when I noticed that Jews can't whisper. Have you noticed this, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Unbelievable, because you know, Latinos know how to whisper, like, mira, culita, man, tu me entiendes, right? You know, Latinos know how to whisper, black people know how to whisper, like, no, see what I'm saying, you see what I'm saying, see what I'm... we don't know what we're saying, but we know how to whisper, and that's the point. I meet Ruthie for the first time. She says, oh, thank you so much for coming. Have a seat. And Elliot put my pocketbook away. <laughs> I meet the best friends for the first time, Edie and Mordecai. Now, y'all know I ain't lying. We ain't got no Mordecais in the hood, right? So Edie is this big, blonde, Hungarian, Jewish princess, green eyes, blue eyeshadow. Every time blinks her eyes, looks like traffic lights. Sing, go, 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 go. Sweetheart, Ruthie says to me that you say that you are black? 
You're such a beautiful girl. Why do you want to say these things about yourself? <laughs> I'm school teacher, 23 years. I know the black people. You are not black. I sh so thanks for telling me to think I've been using Afro Sheen for all the wrong reasons all these years. Hey! See, these white people are trying to give me drama. You can't give me drama. I was born a drama queen. My father's Swedish, my mother African-American. You know what that made me in New York City? A fine Puerto Rican, honey. That's right, that's what it made me, Wepa. That's right, and that worked for me, honey, because when that Puerto Rican day parade comes to New York City, I'll be marching with the rest of them J-Los, because after two babies, within two years, I got a culita like that. I'm like, excuse me, muevete. My name is Maria Santiago Velasquez de Barranquilla, Bogota, Puerto Rico. And I'm living La Vida Loca, just like Ricky Martin. You know, I love her. Anyway. So in closing, I want to say that I came on stage and I a little off, you know, but I am a little off because I come from the heart of the ghetto in a place called Patterson, New Jersey. That's right, Jersey girls, we just want to fight. You know what I'm saying? And where I was raised, I was raised to believe that everyone is a racist because my Uncle Junie boy taught me that. See, every black family has an Uncle Junie boy. Like every Latino family has an Uncle Wongo, but he likes little girls, Cayete. Okay, I'm just kidding, y'all, come on. And my Uncle Junie boy was a trip. He was obsessed with racism in Vietnam. My uncle had books on Vietnam. My uncle had movies on Vietnam, everything on Vietnam. This Negro has never been to Vietnam, okay? You see what I'm saying? Shell shock for no reason. And he would talk to me about racism and he would stutter when he got really excited. He'd be like, yo, Sun Lin, check this out. Don't be buying no pizza pie from damn Italians, I, right? Cause they racist, yo. Cause I learned that in Nam. That's how I was raised. But now I live in New York City, married to a Jew, and I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, none of that's true. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, everyone is not a racist, right? That's right. Everyone is, however, a Nazi bastard. And that is what I've learned from living with a Jew. That's right. Black people don't look at me like I got two heads because I used to be rough and tough and I thought everyone was afraid of me. Now I'm living with a Jew and I'm paranoid and neurotic and I think everyone's talking about me and that's what's happened to me. I'm living with a Jew. But, but you know where I'm paranoid, but seriously, you know where I'm paranoid most? Ladies, back me up. Have you ever gone to the Korean, Malaysian, Vietnamese nail salons and think they're talking about you? You know. I walk in, she's too happy to see me like it's my birthday. This winch doesn't even know me, all right? I say good afternoon, my name is Sunda. I've got a six o'clock pedicure appointment with um, Kim. Oh, hello, Sunda. Mm -hmm. Oh, Anya say also, very good to see you. It looks very pretty today. Mm -hmm. So very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you are here for a pedicure. Very good. Come, come. Time to take off shoes and socks now because it's time to do soaky soaky. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're gonna soak a feet, push back a cuticle, and do a clippy clippy and a toenail. <laughs> okay, very good. Pick a color. Have a seat. I'll be right back. Okay. Honey! Sunda, pali pali, teacher goes to the city, 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 